Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of building the Batman Tumbler skateboard, which is going to be electric and it's going to have motorized steering so it can be driven remotely like a radio controlled car. So last time I got my rolling chassis sorted, I printed my Ninja Flex tires, which took a very long time. And we've got steering, uh, which now operates like the Bat Tumbler, where the wheels face inwards from the outside. So today we're going to put the motor on and we're going to hopefully get the steering sorted and we might be able to do a little test. So I've got a couple of parts here which are 3D printed with the Moore Struder and these are really tough, they've got a bearing in either side and these are going to sit on the inside of the wheels to push and pull them. And in that gap fits a bit of 2020 extrusion made of aluminium which gets screwed on. So those two pieces fit there and that gives me extensions on the shaft there to push and pull the wheels. And that means that I've always got sight of this inside where the push is going to operate instead of it being cut off by the corner of the wheel. And then sandwiched in here between the two layers of plywood is another piece which is effectively a pulley and that's going to have two rods that to attach to those and this is going to be pulled around with a chain and a motor with a much smaller sprocket set at the back somewhere. So here's my chain and that's going to go around the pulley and we've got these 3D printed parts top and bottom which go on to stop the chain falling off. Now this doesn't need to rotate round and round and round, it probably only needs to do sort of 20 or 30 degrees in each direction. So that means we can screw through the chain to attach it to here and on the back we'll have a sprocket. I've got sprockets in various sizes and I've got spares and those are going to attach to a wiper motor which is going to operate the steering. So this pulley is going to have a piece of studding bolted through the middle and it's going to be mounted in these bearing blocks which go above and below on those parallel pieces of plywood. And then we'll have some rods that come from the holes here forwards to operate those steering pushers and pullers. So that piece fits in there and it seems to spin pretty freely on those bearings. So that bit of studding is bolted through with some really big washers each side. So that should make that really strong and there won't be any bend between the metal and the wood. So it's upside down, but I've basically propped this up on everything so I can measure between the holes in these, which have now got their aluminum extrusion in and the holes here. And it looks to be about 240 mil for the things on each side. And obviously if the wheels don't track properly, I can move these holes further in so that they do. So obviously as one pushes forwards here, it's gonna push the wheel forward. And when it comes back, it's going to push it back, but it's just a case of getting them both to track properly. And that can be decided by how close I put these holes. So this is first go with some rods in here. And obviously as we move this, the wheels um, steer. Now I'm a bit worried about the wobble here, of course. So we're going to have a rod underneath. Obviously this studding runs all the way through. So we'll have parallel rods and they may be fixed together as well to stop any flex. But actually the wheels, um, first go seem to track each other pretty well. They look pretty parallel to me. Um, technically they shouldn't be, one should steer more than the other, which is Ackerman steering. But actually for what I'm doing, I'm not too bothered. They do tow in slightly as well, which means they point in when they're in the middle. So I'm pretty happy with that. And they seem to sort of remain uh, largely parallel, pretty much at all stages of the rotation. So this spacing looks like it's uh, kind of coincidentally pretty good. So I've added parallel links now. They're just uh, attached with Velcro to each other to stop the bottom one falling off. But that's much better, so that's much more rigid around this point. Obviously, this needs its other bearing and the plate on top, but these are much more solid. So we could put something between them with a screw in top and bottom, perhaps. But we'll see how it goes like that for now. So I need to put some nuts on all of these things, put the top back on and put nuts on all of these. But that should do for testing. So I've done up all my bolts nice and tight, and this seems to work pretty well. There is a bit of a scrape there. And that is the studding on the pulley that's attached to these rods. And um, the pulley just might be slightly offset, so it's scraping on one side. So I might have to root out the circle for that studding to run. But for now, it's right at the end of the rotation, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be OK. And my motor will be powerful enough to turn the pulley and steer the wheels. So we've got a wiper motor in a bracket that fits my chain and this is going to be mounted this way up. So on the bottom of the board with this. So effectively that will be screwed to the bottom of the board. And that means my sprocket can pull that chain and it can pull the other ends around the pulley. These motors have three wires and depending on which two you connect, there's three combinations, you get three speeds out of the motor. So I need to find the fastest two so we get the most responsive steering and for now I've put the biggest sprocket on. So I've installed the motor on its brackets but there's a bit of a problem which is that I installed the sprocket as high as I could so that the motor's as high as it can be. So it's got ground clearance, however the uh, 
Actual pulley here is about 30 mil from the base, and this is only 10 mil, and I thought I'd get away with it, but actually um, the chain gets pulled over these guards I made on the pulley, and it pulls the chain off, so that doesn't work very well. So now I've made a second bracket, which is basically 20 mil higher, so this puts the motor higher by 20 mil to put it in line, and I've chopped the top off. Um, the only problem, of course, is, so it's basically not much lower, the only problem is this housing on the motor, uh, which will, of course, stick out. So um, the thing with that is, though, it comes off, and um, basically it doesn't really do anything. Um, it would be the thing that counts the revolutions of the motor, so you can do exactly one wiper revolution, or it'll stop in the same place every time. Um, and that's actually quite fat, so I can remove that and put a 3D printed equivalent on there, which I'll put on to protect the uh, worm gear that's in there. And then, of course, I'll get my ground clearance back. Okay, so I've got my new bracket installed. Um, I haven't taken this off yet. It doesn't, in fact, touch the ground, but there's hardly any uh, ground clearance there. So eventually I'll do a different cover. The other option, of course, is to turn that motor up the other way and face it down. Uh, but I'd have to cut a big hole in the board. So perhaps it could go further back behind some cosmetics. And that would make it much lower profile, but this looks fine for testing for now. So let's just give that a go. Steering seems all right. There's a bit of a clicking sound. I'm not sure what that is, actually. I think the chain looks slightly twisted where I've screwed it on, and it's just screwed on with some screws into the pulley. So I might need a new chain. But uh, basically, it runs pretty quick. I think that's going to be responsive enough. It could run on a higher voltage as well. At the moment, it's on 12 volts. It could run up to 24, I guess, if I needed it to. Uh, and we need to obviously have a controller, so that's controlled by radio control. I'm going to use these brackets to mount the main drive motors. Interestingly enough, there's a little bat logo on them. This is the size of the motor I use for the giant LEGO electric skateboard, which is a 280 kV, 50 mil brushless motor. The motors I'm using on the backboard are these, which are much bigger, they're 63 mil, and there's two of them. They're also 149 kV, which is half the RPM, so they should be twice the torque, plus they're massively physically bigger, so hopefully each one is three to four times the torque, times by two. So my motors are fitted to these brackets and the, curiously the screw holes matched almost identically to the existing holes which is great so that's good and there we go should be pretty good and I've mounted those brackets on some 2020 extrusion with some T-nuts so I can tension the belt up and this uh, aluminium is screwed straight through to the steel chassis. Right I've put some batteries on they're pretty big 22 volt lipo packs and I've got again the Hobby King X-Car ESC this is the same one I used on the Lego skateboard they're not really skateboard ESCs, they're not very good at a standing start, although I'm hoping it'll be okay with these massive motors because they're much talkier and much slower. But anyway, let's power that up and see what it does. So again, I've got one of these RC uh, handsets with the trigger. Seems pretty good, and we've also got reverse this time as well because we need to drive it like an RC car. And all I've done basically is spliced both the um, radio control signals from the receiver into the two ESCs. Right, let's see what that can do on the ground. Oh, well that was alright, it sounded much better than the skateboard. So that was reverse into Ford, which is uh, doesn't have the braking but just turns the wheels the other way, so... Oh wow, this... Uh... Seems like it's going to be okay, actually. Maybe I should try standing on it. Whoa. Right, so those motors seem amazing. I think I've got probably four times torque than the motors from the Lego skateboard, so being two of them we've got eight times as much torque and that's why it works much better from a standing start, even with the same ESCs, which aren't even skateboard ESCs, they're just from radio control cars, but they can definitely handle the current. So now I've fitted some extra bits and pieces to deal with the steering. I've got an Arduino Pro Mini here, which is reading the other channel for the steering from the radio control receiver. It's actually doing that using interrupts because it has to read the pulses very accurately and the pulses range from between one and 2,000 microseconds in one microsecond intervals. And you can't really do that using pulse in because it's not very accurate. 
So you need an interrupt attached to one pin. So when that pin changes state, it starts and stops the timer. So that is basically driving this motor driver, which is a BTS 7960, and that is connected to the motor for steering and also has its own battery, which is 12 volts to drive that steering motor. The Arduino is powered from its own USB boost pack at the moment. Eventually I'll tidy all this up and we'll probably take a five volt regulator off this battery that powers the steering motor and use that to power all the electronics. For now it's hacked together. I have got the batteries Velcroed down in bases so none of it should fall off while I'm driving. So now I can move the steering wheel. Now there's no feedback on here. So what we really need is a feedback pot and to turn that motor into a servo. But for now it just controls motor speed. So if I push the steering wheel to the right there, we can see the wheels move very slow to the right. And if I push further, they go faster. Um, they don't auto center like a radio control car at the moment. And that's why we need that additional feedback pot. So we can actually say when the stick is in the middle and the value coming out of here is in the middle, move the wheels to the middle. But for now, it's just a speed control for that motor. So if I move it completely the other way, we get steering that way and so on. And we can steer a little bit or we can steer more slowly and so on. So that will do to test the mechanics. At some point I'll come back and I'll put proper proportional steering in. So I think the backboard's gonna be a lot of fun. It was a very interesting experience to drive. Obviously I had to drive with the remote and steer with the steering wheel. So I had this GoPro on a selfie stick and that's the only way I could film it at the same time. So two-handed driving is not particularly convenient. Obviously a normal skateboard you lean to steer so you can film with the other hands, but um, that's not the case with this one. So um, also it was really hard to actually steer because it doesn't auto center. So that's something I definitely need to sort out. What I found was when I steer a little bit, it keeps steering, so when you let go of the steering wheel, you expect it to center and to be able to stand upright, but actually the board's still going that way, and it throws you off. So I really need that feedback pot and proper proportional steering that means that basically the wheel will center when I let go, and I can steer a little bit and lean at the same time, and that'll be much more natural. Another thing I'd like to do, instead of having two hands to drive, is put a laser pointer on this and point that at the ground and make it laser guided by having it follow the dot, and that would be much more natural to lean and point the laser at the same time. So that's something that's gonna happen in the next part. Also, at the moment, it looks like a piece of wood and some steel, so we wanna put some cosmetics on, and I've done most of the CAD already. We're gonna make 3D printed prints with the more Struder to add all those cosmetics on to make it look like the Bat Tumbler. And in the future, I'd like to add more robotic features, a bit like autonomous driving and some things like that using a LiDAR, because that's what Batman would have. So don't forget to subscribe to check out more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also, it's really important to say all my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me, access to all my videos early and almost daily sneak peeks and pictures. All right, that's all for now.